Today is Saturday, April 18th, 1987. Following is an interview with Hazel Vincent of Southampton, Massachusetts by Stephen Howland. <laughs> well, I don't know, what can you, this is, I told you this is for my class. Wait a minute, let me get my hearing aid in. Okay. Yes, I know you were writing or something. See, this makes my leg jitter. Yeah. Well. And I can't stop it. That's okay. <laughs> that happens, I guess. Um, the only thing to stop it is to go and lie down. Mm. But, um, Alice will do much better than I, because she has a lot of funny things. Oh, okay. Um, well, this is funny and serious is fine. Doesn't matter. Uh, I was. This one of the things I'm very interested in is is um, place names in town. Uh, for instance, uh, how did Fog in Town get called Fog in Town? Uh, do you remember? Anything like that? No. Um, there's Bedlam Street. It seems to me there used to be years ago a family that lived over there. A lot of children, and they were very noisy. So they. That's all I remember. <laughs> I don't know what family, and hmm. I don't know what, what it was called before it was called Bedlam. But I wish they had left it, Bedlam. So do I, yeah, I think that would have been nice. There's a pleasant street. <laughs> I'm sorry that I can't... Just can't stop. That's okay. Um, there's, a, there's a pleasant street in every town in the United States. Only one Bedlam. I think that's probably right. Uh, well, uh, there was some... Somebody remarked about that in the paper. A long time ago. Hmm. Well, maybe someday. Uh, somebody from way off. Maybe someday we can get them to change it back. Well, I wish they would. But the people that lived there didn't like it. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> I know Betty. Betty still uh, likes it better as Pleasant Street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Because she lives there. Now, you grew up in the house across the street, right? Born. Born there. My father was born there. Really? What what year was that house built? Do you remember? Eight. I would say 1850. 1850. That's close enough. There. There was an old house there first, and when they built this, my grandmother and I wanted it built up on the hill here. Right. But they didn't because they couldn't get the water up. There. The water comes from the spring up here. Oh, really? So, so, uh, so they had to build it where they could get the water to it. And the, uh, the two kitchens were part of the old house. Those they tore off. When this, they just recently tore them off. That's right. Yeah. I remember because when Ed Desilo lived there, they were still there. You remember Ed? Yeah. He used to mow your lawn, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, was it was it um, a farmhouse? Did you grow up on a farm? Yeah. And where? How was the was the golf course here at all? Oh heavens, no. No, I mean, was it was it fields for the farm? Yeah, um, that was all mowing, our gardens. Mhm. Mm what did you What did you raise? What kind of cows or Guernseys or anything? They, yeah, they had Guernseys for quite a while. And my grandfather, Lyman, uh, had a route where he sold, he made butter. Mm -hmm. And he picked up eggs around town. And every week, on Wednesdays, 
went to Springfield. And he he butchered sheep. There used to be a sheep pen down in that barn. And he butchered them and cut up the meat and everything put back to Springfield. Did you ever ride the sheep when you were young? Herm Andrews tells story, tells me that he's the right <laughs> to ride the sheep. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And he'd start about I guess four or five o'clock in the morning, drive to Springfield. We had this covered van, and he'd get home at the seven or eight o'clock at night. And we used to listen for him when he came down the hill here. He'd go, whoo! And we kids would call to my grandmother Lyman in the other kitchen, Grandpa's coming. That's great. <laughs> I remember that. And he had the best trade in Springfield. I forget what State Street or somewhere. Anyway, he had a good, good business. Good. You've, you've uh, written quite a few articles, I think, for some of the local papers, for the Gazette. And stuff. Uh, for Hampshire Life, this, this uh, part of the Gazette. And in my ignorance, I've never read any of your articles. <laughs> yeah, they are there. Maybe, maybe you can relate some of what... Um, I'll get them. <clears throat> I've had the best time doing, doing that. Did you turn that off? It's still going. <laughs> I think it would be a wonderful day. Now there's my subjects. And if you think there's any one of those wow. that... Uh, there's any help. <laughs> What's this, uh, Ma gets her license? That sounds like that could be a funny story in here. Now that isn't bad. <laughs> now I get to realize this. Going, can, you, can you remember this, what, the story you just... Or the, you got it all out in writing, writing it. Uh, and the medicine shell.
made you decide to get your license at 72? Because I was afraid of my husband's driving. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's fair. That's fair. He was uh, was he getting older? Uh, uh, yes, he was older, older than I, and he was he was no longer a good driver, and I was afraid to ride. And he wanted to go to ride every day. So you said it was time to. for you to drive. I had to. So let's see. So how long did you keep your license then? When did you? Um, up to a couple of years ago, I did. So. So you had it quite a while, like so oh, yeah. 10 years or oh, yeah. 15 years. I remember that old uh, black car you had. Was that the only car that Down there now, you still got it? it. Huh? I gave it to Darrell and told him he could do what he wanted with it. And mm -hmm. do something with it. Something. When did you put it? It's a 19, um, it's a 64 Comet, I uh -huh. believe. Is that the only car that you ever owned? or? It's the only one I ever drove. It's the only one you ever drove. <laughs> well, it still looks pretty nice, I imagine. It does. It looks good. And they uh, built in big... You never drove... Uh, you, what kind of cars do you remember your uh, your father having back when you were a kid? You yeah. My father finally got a Model T. Finally. Uh, and that probably lasted quite a while. The Model T did. The one I ever had. Yeah. Did you have any extra copies of, of these? Hmm. Is this an extra copy, or can I? I've got one somewhere. Hmm. I've got another folder. Stuff in it. Uh, I wrote that up front little one time. How many stores do you remember in, in town? There was stores? Yeah. Judge and Lyman and Boyd. Where was it? Lyman and Boyd is where Doug Manson lives now. Okay. And Judge was just across the common. It just was. I, I don't know what is there now. Gun shop. The gun shop. Yeah, there was the red and white store. I remember it as the yeah. calf market. They were in there for a little while. Yeah. But there's always judge when I was a girl. Which which school did you go to when you grew up? Number there? five. Number five. Which was what district? That was up. Oh, well, it's where the Wickies and the Sherman's house is now. Okay. What was the name of that district? That was five. The... Number five. How the Southwest district? How many kids were in the school? Oh, probably thirty. Thirty. I'm, I'm still amazed that, at, that there was enough people to have seven schools in town. And Julia Norris was the teacher. Okay. All the time I was there. How many How many grades did you go Six. through? Six. Six grades. That's pretty good. And then we went to the grammar school, which was the old Sheldon Academy, mm -hmm. uh, for seventh, eighth, and ninth grades. And that's as far as you went, right? Nine grades? And then we had to go out of town to high school. Did you go to high school? Oh, yeah. yeah. East Hampton. East Hampton. What year would that have been? I graduated in 1917. 1917. Um, what, do you, what was the, um, what was it like in Southampton during, especially World War II? That was an, you must have had uh, gas rationing and, 
sugar. Sugar was scarce. So did you cook with honey a lot? Or what? Did you cook with honey as a sweetener? Oh, or no, we, just ma we managed. Got enough, you managed to get enough sugar. Mm -hmm. And because uh, you had to have blackout curtains, right? Do you remember that? I remember. Remember. But I don't think we have them in the house. Uh, no, no. Uh, there are still a few in, in um, my parents' house. There are a couple uh -huh. of, um, that still are hanging there. And, um, what did your What did your husband do for work? <laughs> do you want my first or second? Both. Well, now. Uh, Oro was a plumber. Oro Hendrick. Mm -hmm. He was a plumber. Um, student him. And Al Vincent was a salesman for Sakoni Vacuum. It's vacuum cleaners? Or, or a vacuum cleaner salesman? Or, or what kind of, what did he sell? Oh. He didn't go around selling. Right. Oil. Oil. Sikoni Mobile Oil. Oh, Sikoni Mobile. Mm. Oil. Yeah. When did you move into this house? This? Ted built for me in nine. I can't remember. Huh? No. I think where I would have had it written down. Either. Well, that's, that's not that important. The other thing that uh, is fascinates me, of course, is that Southampton still maintains the old home day tradition, which is really wonderful. And uh, I make it occasionally the old home day. And yeah, did I give you one of the old I, home day? Days? I think there's one right here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I've got a lot of those. You can have that. Okay. You you probably remember going to that uh, just about every year. Oh yeah, when I was a girl, um, of course then we ate up on the lawn. I think it's all about uh, me. Yeah, it looks like. Yeah, yeah it's about that. Yeah. But the Boston Globe, big newspaper, right. um, gave a gold-headed cane, I don't know to how many towns in Massachusetts, no, which towns, and I think it was of Ebony, and the top was Gilt of gold, gilded, okay. with an inscription with a tower on it, and it was to be given to and passed down to the oldest resident. So what happened? So that's what it's. This August, all Monday, it is going to be given to Mrs. Garska. Oh. who is 95. It has been with a couple of Polish women. I, I never knew them. Um, but I want to find out what towns I want the inscription, the, the year they gave it. Um, what else do I want? Anyway, I have told Maxine about it, and she's going to check up in Forbes Library. So the, the golden is now Mrs. Garska will keep the golden cane until, until she, she dies. dies. Then, 
her family will give it back to the select men, and they will check and see who's the next oldest. That would be interesting because I've never heard that. Um, I talked to Doug Madsen about it, and I think all, a lot of this information is in the town hall, safe from what he said. And I'm going to see if they will let um, Elon Ted O'Maxi go in there and, and look for the find out, copy it. There, there you go. Mm -hmm. Be nice to have a record of that. Because that will make a good article. Because that will be of interest, wider interest than these other things that I like. I, that's, uh, they're great. They're really wonderful articles. Two weeks ago, I went to a cocktail party. I did the church for over a year, but I could go to a cocktail party. <laughs> right, right. There you go. <laughs> um, oh, I'm sure we're, this was the invitation. <clears throat> From the Gazette. How was it a big party? <clears throat> well, I called up this woman and told her I wanted awfully to come by. I wasn't at all well, and I didn't know whether I'd get there or not. And she said, you want to bring somebody with you? And I said, yes, my son and daughter-in-law, Bob and Leona. Bob said, I'd love to take you to that. She says, I'll put you down for three anyway. Well, Bob said, you and Leona would take me up. Anyway, <laughs> the day before I called him, I said, I can't go up there. I just can't make it. Wait till tomorrow. And he said, I'll call you tomorrow afternoon. See how you're feeling. He says, we can go in whenever you want to. We can come out whenever you want to. If we get halfway up and you don't feel like it, we'll turn around and come home. So the next day, when he called, I said, I'm going. I'm going. And uh, of course, I didn't know anybody. I know the editor, Nancy Fraser. Uh -huh. We're very good friends. She's been here two or three times. She's brought me flowers. And, and anyway, I was so glad to see her. And she spent as much time with us as she could. Of course, she had to circulate and see everybody. Mm -hmm. Anyway, <clears throat> they had this little, oh, they got chairs for us. So sit down. Because I can't stand. Right. And, um, and this long table. And they had egg rolls. They had marinated mushrooms. All that kind of, mostly you eat with your fingers. And they had, I didn't smell any coughing. I, uh, I had seen to worry about. And they had sodas. I don't know whether they had any drinks there or not. <laughs> whether it was a real cocktail party or not, huh? <laughs> I, I didn't see anything of any. Anyway, we left. We, uh, Bob and Leona went down to see the press for me. I didn't walk down yeah. there because that's at long the walk. far end of the office. And after that, I came home. <laughs> uh, uh, speaking of alcohol, uh, it, it always surprises me that there was a prohibition period in Southampton, and Herman Andrews remember that because he remembers getting beer over at Hampton Ponds <laughs> under the table. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Uh, there's a... Uh, but my family never drank. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, interesting period in time. And, uh, Did you ever see a, a newspaper office inside? No, I never have. I don't know how they do any work. The desks are right. Right next to elbow each other. to elbow, and every desktop that I saw was a complete mess. <laughs> Papers, books. <laughs> well, Bob says every newspaper office is like that. They, uh, I guess I've seen them in the movies. They look like that in the movies. Well, that's the way. It they really are. Uh -huh. huh? Um, they, they, uh, I guess that's a fast, so fast pace that... Oh, I know. Think of meeting a deadline every single day. You don't think you could write like that, huh? <laughs> no. Yeah. Nancy Fraser, she said, she said to me about that night, she said, are you writing anything? We should. Yeah, they like your stuff, right? Uh, Oh, I said, I don't know. Well, I'll see. What did you, you think about it? And after she went back to her desk, Bob said, I know what she could write about. I said, what? The gold-headed cane. And he told her all what he'd like to know about it. So he gets it started on, on writing. Yeah, so he uh, got me the subject. Good. Yeah, that'll be interesting. I would like to read about that as well, not knowing anything about it. Well, then another thing. I sat down to the typewriter the other day. I, I had old Burton Randall a letter for a long time. And then I forgot about it. And I said, oh, I've got to write to Burton. And so I turned. Burton and letter. And the old typewriter kept skipping and skipping. Yeah. I made a mess of the letter, but I apologized and sent it all. Next time Maxine was down, I told her about it. She said, well, you try it. No trouble. Works fine for her. Huh? My fingers. I apparently don't hit them quite hard enough, enough quick enough. Oh, so it just gives it an electric typewriter? Oh, or just, no, no. <laughs> it's a typewriter that I used. I had it new at Stanley Home Products. And I brought it home with me when I retired. And that, I retired in... Uh, 64, I guess. How long did you work for Stan Home? 14 years. 14 years. As secretary, or...? Mm. Hmm, that's uh, that's not too long to work, I guess, but it's quite a while. Well, where did I work before that? Oh, yeah, the old West Boylston Company. That was, that was where Stanley was, years ago. What did they make? Well, West Boylston made fabrics. Yeah. I worked there till I married Oral. And then, which is, oh, that's where I met Al. He was a salesman up there. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Have you been to a church since they put the elevator in? I've been to church for a year. <laughs> well, neither have I. <laughs> I don't know if it's good an excuse. Maybe they'll think now there's an elevator, she'll come back. <laughs> can't go and sit when I don't know when this is going to come on. Yeah. I went up there to the dessert office, no trouble at all. 
I can go a whole day and it doesn't bother. That is from the, the sharp nerves. And Dr. Cowan is uh, waiting to get in touch with the neurologist who is not going to be back until May uh, to see if there's any medication he can suggest that would quiet this. They just look like you're fidgety. You can never I sit know still. It. <laughs> I know it. I mean, it's disagreeable for anybody to watch. Well, this is like watching a, a young kid in church. You know, they can never sit still. Okay. Yeah, just like just like that. Uh, but well, I should tell you about my little boy. Oh, I haven't asked a word about yeah. it. It's very exciting. Uh, he was seven pounds, nine ounces, and his name is Winter. With a Y. Oh, W-Y-N-T-E-R. Oh, that's yeah, that's nice. Is that a family... Not person. really. No, no. I no. just sort of picked it uh, out of the blue. Well, it's nice to have something different. Yeah, that's what we thought. And uh, it was a lot of, it's so much fun to have yeah. it, even though you're up in the middle of the night. <laughs> um, are you staying down at Miriam's now? This, well, just this weekend. And we stayed down there last week. I knew you were there at first. Yeah, and because uh, I had school and stuff, so Sarah had someone to cook sure. meals for us, awful nice. Sure. Uh, and uh, then we came down this weekend to spend the weekend, because Grandma likes to have it. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. <laughs> yeah, she loves it, yeah. yeah. Um, is somebody living in Esther's house? Yes, that's rented out to uh, uh -huh. a fellow. I don't remember his name. Well, I wouldn't remember anyway. Yeah, he's not from town. But yeah. Yeah, so the house is still in the family anyway. Well, that's nice. You might. One of you need it sometime. Yeah, that's right. You mm -hmm. might. <laughs> well, as to going to church, I I can't go. Yeah. Well, that's I don't okay. miss it. Yeah. <laughs> I won't tell anybody. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so. <sighs> How, when did they put the golf course in there? I can't tell you. Were you still living in that house when they put the golf course in? And my father and mother were. You no, know, I had married and left. Well, that's quite a change from the farm, I'm sure. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad that they fixed it up. The house, yeah. And they built two new kitchens. There's four apartments. There's four apartments in there now. Oh. Well, it was a big house. Yeah, that's right. Because I've been in there quite a bit because I was best friends with Ed. Mm -hmm. So I, they lived upstairs there for quite a while. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was a nice house. Nice and big. But it was falling. It was falling apart when they lived there. Was, yeah. Especially those back kitchens were pretty, Gosh, pretty those rickety. Are pretty old. Yeah. Mm. But, uh, the now. Did pretty, you see anything in there about water tubs? Yes, I did. I uh -huh. think I took it. Yeah. Um, because there were seven on the farm. For the. For the cattle. Uh, there was one in each kitchen. There was one underneath the kitchen on this side. There was one in the milk room, which was in the cellar to the old kitchen. There one, two, three, four. There's four. Then in the barn, there was one down in the horse barn, there was one in the lower part of the main barn, and there was a trough in the barnyard. And the, the water came, all the water came from that spring, it's right there. There's still the brook going through the golf course, now that must be fed from that spring. Yeah. And they well, that spring is a little book. 
flows down into Moon's Brook. Right. Mm. I don't see the one on the water tubs here. I guess maybe I didn't. I mean, the tide. Tie her mother shot the donkey. Shot a donkey? What was, should I get it from her or can you remember it? From her. <laughs> okay. I, can't, I can't talk well enough. You can't. Uh... She was a librarian when I grew up. Eva, Eva Gridley. Eva and her mother was Mrs. Wood, who had remarried. And she used to come out the kitchen door and let her bucket down into that well and haul it up with water. I remember her so plainly. And down here, almost down to Tark, the spilling station, the big farmhouse, that side of the road, just before I think the wine guards. Is that where the wine guards live now? That was the old ranger. Ranger was my grandmother. Okay. My mother and aunts were ranger girls born down there. And in there, I think that's in there, in there, back room, there was a well. Really good. And my great grandmother Rogers lived with Grandma Ranger, my grandfather down there. Mm -hmm. She's an old old lady. <clears throat> she went out into the shed one night for some apples. Somebody had left the cover up. It should have over been put well. down over the well. She walked right down into the well. Yeah. And her hoop skirt caught on the rim of the well. <laughs> and held her there. And so she hugged. <laughs> so from the hoop skirt. And they, they finally heard somebody, a faint call. And my grandfather, Roger, Ranger, went out and found her hanging there. He just reached out, got hold of her arms, lifted her out. Lifted her out. <laughs> <laughs> that story has been told by my grandmother. Well, that's that's amazing. All my guys, <laughs> I've heard that story. <laughs> that's amazing. I can't believe it. It's quite a story about Will J. Lyman, Chief Lyman, having the shingles. He had shingles, a terrible. And. <clears throat> They, uh, my Aunt Lilla and my grandmother Ranger lived downstairs. No, they all lived together. Mm -hmm. Will, uh, Grandma Ranger and Aunt Lilla and Will and Emma. Because Will J. Chief Lyman had the shingles. And he And they used to say, if they met in the center, you're going to die. And die. And he keep looking to see things. Oh, he's looking, huh? Yeah. And then he Emma! Emma, I can't find it! Looking for his pulse. <laughs> it's there, he wouldn't be looking for it. <laughs> well, then Alice told me this story that Aunt Lilla told it. Of course, Lilla lived there, you know. Uh, it was, it was, the shingles were so bad, he couldn't bear any coals. So <laughs> he shut himself in the front parlor, the front room of the house. And he stayed in there naked. And when, <laughs> when they served his meals, Aunt Lilla did the cooking. And most of that kitchen work. She would take a tray. She'd go to the parlor door. Right. 
dinner. And here it comes. Just open as a crack. She just stood up. She would look at him because he was naked. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Did he eventually die from the shingles or did he yeah. they just just bothered him all? No, after that he had a <clears throat> horse kicked kicked because he broke his leg. Well, he had all sorts of troubles, didn't he? Oh. And then they had to move, they moved the bed down into the living room. Big room where he went right in from the porch. <coughs> so they set the bed up in that corner. Uncle Will was established in that bed. From there, he could look up and down the street, see who was going by. And people could come in and talk with him. He was right there. Oh dear. Mm -hmm. he, he was a funny one. I, I, I had been with friends uh, out to the Grand Canyon and Lake Louise and so on. I'd been there for months. <coughs> and that was in 1950, I believe. And I came back. And I went, in, went into the front home. I was, by that time, my mother and father were living upstairs in that East Street house. And on the hall table were all these baskets that, you know, come, flowers come in from funeral homes. And it looked so there'd been a funeral here, I thought. And <clears throat> And then Aunt Emma came in. She was his wife, Will Jay's wife. And he was her. She'd always stand with her hands folded across her stomach. Your Uncle Will has passed away. But I don't think I'm going to miss him. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, what a character, yeah. That's funny. <laughs> Not going to miss him. Nobody missed the poor man. Hmm. He, was, he was church janitor for a long, long time. And almost always in the winter, when Mr. McGee or Mr. Whoever was there was the <coughs> in the midst of a long prayer, you'd hear this crash of coal being shoved into the furnace down cellar, down in the basement. He just wait right for the middle of the prayer, right? He went every morning, got the church ready, warm, he kept it nice and warm. And then he rang the last bell. They rang one at nine o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Then they would they would ring one at quarter of eleven of the church began. And he'd always finish with the three dings. And <clears throat> when I was organist, uh, when I heard those three dings, I knew it was time for me to start playing. You're right. Then he'd then he'd go down and they pulled the bell, pulled the bell mm -hmm. from the upstairs. Vestibule. Uh, and put on his overcoat, go home. Never stayed to church. <laughs> Just pulled the bell. Got the church warm and uh, Told the bells. Fourth of July was a busy time for Fourth of July or Halloween, one or the other. That's when the young folks cut up, did their stunts and things. Right. And he was so conscientious. But he got along with the kids. 
they made fun of him behind his back, but who could help it? Right. Yeah. Oh, dear. <coughs> well, for a woman that can't talk. <laughs> no, you're doing pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Now I have to remember all these things, but this is quite a selection of paper you're giving me here. What's Herman well, going to tell you about? Hmm? What was Herman going to tell you about? Oh, he, he uh, told me about uh, West Park. He grew up in West Park, of course. Oh, he and knows a lot about it.